If you think that using life effectively requires complex racks or max for life devices, then you probably watch too many videos from this bald guy here. Don't get me wrong though, it's cool to nerd out sometimes, but I bet you missed a ton of opportunities that come from basic tweaks and simple adjustments. We all know that custom templates are cool, but I think that default track templates are far more important. For example, once I press Command Shift and T to make a new MIDI track, here is a first improvement I made. This little guy here allows me to quickly shift between octaves. To give you a little perspective on that, let's actually use it in one of the tracks I already have here. That's a default state. And then once I press this button, it automatically shifts it up an octave. Then we can get really squeaky. I made it into a rack, but if you want, you can just use basic pitch MIDI effect, drop it here. And then once you click on the pitch, then press shift and down arrow, you can switch between octaves quickly. But if you like the idea of this little quick rack here, you can do this for yourself by just grouping the pitch MIDI effect. Then we can uh, highlight some macros, then switch on macro variations. And now let's map this pitch knob to macro one. We can actually hide all the macros since we don't need them at all. That's our default state. So let's just press this new button to make a first variation. Now we can make it an octave down like this and then just make a new variation. And once you switch between them, you get the idea. Next on my default MIDI track is this basic EQ, which is not as fancy as this little thing. And yeah, at this point, it feels like I have a fetish for utility devices, but hear me out. If you like me and you have your tracks close to zero dB, once you're gonna use some analog emulations, like for example, let's just put a distressor here. As for right now, it's gonna peak like crazy. And have in mind that every analog emulation have a working range, so you can enjoy the character you obviously pay too much for. So now I can just press this button and turn my signal down, or even if I want to turn it a little bit down again. Now I have full control over the gain and I can tweak all of those parameters inside this compressor. Okay, a quick little update I need to make about this particular topic. So yes, you can definitely use input inside your compressor, then make a signal quieter, then compress it and do all that stuff, and then drive the output up to gain match it. But if you have really hot signals coming into the compressor, sometimes it's really hard to do the gain matching thing. So that's why I made this rack to actually drive a quieter input, then you can play with input inside your compressor and then safely gain match it. Hope that makes sense. Back to the video. But it's not only for controlling gain. You can quickly pan left to the right, mute the signal, and then check mono, mid image, or check how bad your side image sounds. Which in this case is actually pretty okay. If that sounds like a useful device to you, I actually added it to my ultimate utility. So if you already made a donation, First, it means the world, and second, you should already have a update email with the link to download it. If you decided to get it for free, no harsh feelings, but you will need to download it again. But those tweaks and racks mean nothing without the final step. So if you already set your devices you want to have by default here, all you get to do is to go here to your MIDI track and then click this, save as default MIDI track. By default, once you drag a sample into drum rack, it opens it inside Simpler. Nothing bad with our good old friend, but I think that the new drum sampler is way more convenient to use inside drum rack. Obviously, you can right click on the top bar and switch Simpler to drum sampler if you want to waste time. Instead, you can go to user library, then defaults and dropping samples on drum rack, then you can just drag and drop drum sampler here. I already had a sampler for the purpose of presentation, so I will delete this here. And now once I go into my drum rack here and drop just a random sample here, like this clap, for example, 
it automatically opens inside drum sampler. Another new thing added to life was the new and improved browser. I was one of many to question its magic functions and sound similarity. It turns out that you can actually squeeze out something cool from this little mess here. Guys at Ableton actually improved it over time. So for example, once I will want to search for the kick, one shot, then yeah. That's actually its failure because yeah, you can actually search for kicks and it works really great, but sometimes it can get you like totally different sounds than a kick, obviously. But to be completely honest, if I want to search for kicks, it's not that big of a difference than just scrolling through your sample library, which you obviously got only from trusted sources. A better use for the new improved browser here is to make your own categories to quickly search some things. And as you can see, I started to do something with kicks. But am I lazy as bitch? As we speak about Max for live devices. I actually did a pretty good job here, if you ask me. So let's say you want to create this type of group with your favorite snares. All you got to do is to go to edit. Then if you don't have your default group already here, you can then click add group and name it with your nickname or name of your girlfriend. I don't know. It's up to you. Then you can add a tag. Let's just add a new one and call it snares that hit like my dad's belt. 90s kids will get the reference. And now let's just quickly add a bunch of snares here. So let's just focus on one pack because once again, I'm lazy today. Let's say I really like this one. So just check it here. Then this one, okay, check it here. Now, it's not as simple and intuitive to have it here on your browser, but luckily seed to stage did a whole video about browser. So full credit goes to him. All you got to do is to go to all or basically click command and F. And then we are going to search for tag. So let's put hashtag here and then snares. And you can already see that we have our newly created group here. So click it, we have three snares here. And now once I click this plus icon, it actually appears here. Cool thing is that you can actually change the name here and basically reorder just like you do with all your packs and devices here. Okay, but this one is super simple to do, yet totally underrated. So if you have any sort of analyzer, like for example, this free TDR Prism, which is totally slept on, if you go to another track, for example, it disappears instantly. Whether you want to have it always on for the sole purpose of it, which is analyzing, or you just want to look like you know what you're doing on your Instagram videos, you don't need to get a second screen or buy crazy expensive hardware analyzers. All you get to do is to go to live settings here, then you need to go to the plugins tab and then on click auto hide plugin windows. And I always use this function to quickly check my kick and bass relationship with this super overpriced oscilloscope I decided to purchase. So now I can have it on here and then adjust the bass obviously, which is the track that oscilloscope is on. But then I can go to my kick and then change some things like for example transpose it up and down and i can still see how it affects the whole signal and the oscilloscope i have here. and listen i'm not responsible for the damage that it can do if you decide to max out on open plugin windows but feel free to let me know how many you manage to get also let me know if there are any other hidden features you use daily and I totally miss them. If you learned something new and you are not subscribed, then press this goddamn button to not miss on any new videos about life, like for example this one.